Have you heard the statistics on trader failure rate? I'm sure you have. It's all over the place. Some people say 95%, some people say 90. Others even go as low as like 80. I'm not sure where these numbers come from exactly, but I wanted to make a video today on why people are so terrible at day trading. I was once terrible at day trading. So I feel like this is something that is pervasive. It affects everyone who starts day trading. We're all terrible when we start out, but I think we can grow from here and we can improve. And so if we know the reasons why we're terrible in the beginning, maybe some of us who are new, maybe some of you out there who are newer to day trading can skip some of these pitfalls and advance to a point where you have a little bit of awareness of what you're probably going to be bad at and maybe how to change it. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna be profitable from day one, I'm just saying you'll have a little more awareness about what you are possibly bad at, if that makes any sense. So with that, let's jump in. All right, everybody, so I received an email from someone a while back and I went through this email and it made me really sad because this person has lost a lot of money and I wanna help them, but when I attempted to help them, they didn't really hear my advice, they didn't really take any action and so it made me wonder if a video could reach a bigger audience and we could have some dialogue about it, some back and forth, so that I can follow up and ask more questions of you all and maybe we can figure out what's going on with our trading that makes us so terrible when we start. So I took pieces of this email apart and I'm gonna post them on the screen here and just as we go through things, I wanna break down the mindset of this trader, what they were going through and sort of what I saw as a resolution to these problems. And I tell you what, if you stay till the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a treat. I'm gonna actually show you a live trade that I recorded on Monday. I caught my trade live and I wanna play it back for you at the end of this video. So that's your reward for staying till the very end of this video. And I promise we'll keep this nice, short and sweet. All right, let's take a look at the first part of this email. And I wanna be clear, I'm not trying to say anything bad about this person. I'm just showing you pieces of this email. I'm not revealing any identity of who this was. And I even changed some of the numbers just so that even you guys out there won't even know who this is. But I just wanna stress these points because they're so important and they're so key to your success as a day trader. Okay, so the first one is, Jimmy, I can't tell you how frustrated I am. I cannot seem to get a hold of my trading. I have been losing five to 30% every day. I get a good win and then slowly lose it all. I am so frustrated. So real quick, drop down in the comments, tell me if you know what's wrong with this already. So it's pretty clear, saying that you're losing five to 30% every day, that's horrific. So after each one of these lines that I read, I wanna reference a list that I've made as far as where I think they could make improvements and what steps maybe they can take. So what this first excerpt from the email tells me is that there is no risk management in place. And if you've heard me harp on this before, you know that without a risk management plan, you may as well find something else to do because you're never gonna make it. Your losses are gonna outsize and outpace your gains and eventually, like this person, you're gonna end up blowing up your account. Because if you think about a 30% loss in one day, I mean, in four days, that account's gone. There's, I mean, there's no way you can, you can participate in the markets losing that much each day. So what do I think this person needs to do? I think they really need to think about where their stop loss is, they need to think about where their target is, because in this email, they don't mention where they would be exiting during their trades. They don't talk about where they're being stopped out. They don't talk about what they're deciding to do to manage the trade. Are they gonna have a trailing stop loss, a hard stop loss, a mental stop loss? There's no mention of any of that. So all I can assume from this point is that they don't necessarily have a hard stop in place and that they don't exactly know where they're taking their profit. What multiple, what reward to risk ratio are they working with? And finally, in my previous videos, I'll link one right here, I talk about share size and I talk about how to calculate that. You need to know your stop loss because that's exactly how you calculate your share size. So without stop loss, you have no idea how many shares that you should be buying in order to observe your risk unit. You don't wanna lose any more than your risk unit. And if you don't know what your risk unit is, again, that video I just pointed out, check that out. I talk about it, I break it down a little bit, and it'll help clarify exactly what that risk unit is. All right, next up, the second excerpt from this email. I've lost 20K of my 25K in the last two months, 
I work so hard and lose every day. I fight to get 20 or $30 for an hour and then lose 200 in a matter of minutes. I feel like I'm being laughed at. So this is incredibly sad because A, nobody's laughing at you. We've all been there. When you're losing money in the beginning, and you will lose money in the beginning because you don't know what you're doing and you have these bad habits that you've got to clean up. You've got to get yourself into a system where you have a trade plan, a risk management plan, and you know your appropriate share size. So again, losing 20K of your 25K in two months, you're trading way too large of size. Your size needs to be much, much smaller. That's problem number one. And then just piggybacking on problem number one, I'll call it problem 1A, is making very small gains and then having one big gain wipe everything out. They said in this email, making 20 or $30 and then losing 200. So clearly we don't know what our risk unit is in this scenario. This trader is trading on an unknown risk unit and that's causing them to start to go red on a trade, not know what to do, not know if they should stay in it or get out. And then maybe one day they say, I'm going to stay in, I'm going to stay in. And then it goes against them hard and that wipes out any winner that they've had. So you have to know what your R value is if you're going to make it in this game. So moving on from having no trading plan and having no risk management plan, I want to look at excerpt number three. I'm not tracking my trades. I don't know how. Okay, so really simply right there, you don't know how to track your trades. So I propose to this person a couple options. Spreadsheet. You can get a spreadsheet out in Google Docs. You can start labeling dates, times, the setup you're taking, what your R value was, what your stop loss was, time of day. You can track all these things in a spreadsheet. Make it very easy for yourself. And that way you can log 10, 20, 30 trades then go back and look at them and calculate win rates. What's your win rate from trade to trade? And what's your win rate day to day? How many days are you green overall? Even if you had a red trade within one of those days. So that's one option. The other option, and this is the option I use now, is using TraderView.com. It's a website you can go to, you can upload your trades, and no, this video is not sponsored by TraderView, so don't, don't worry about any of that. If you go to TraderView.com though, and you sign up for an account, you can have a free account, and you can upload 100 trades a month. That's perfect to start off. If you're trading more than 100 times a month as a brand new trader, there might be a problem there as well with over trading. But if you upload your trades and they make it very easy to do, you just get a file downloaded from your broker, um, from your trading platform, and then you upload to TraderView every day and it'll calculate all of your metrics. It'll break down all your numbers, win loss, win days, loss days, profit factors, average winner, average loser. It'll tell you all this stuff. And you can start to see patterns in this data. And this could be an upcoming video where we break down some trader view data because you have to know where you are. If you're just walking through the forest and you have no map, you have no reference points, how do you ever know where you're going, how you're going to get anywhere? You have to be able to see the landscape. You have to be able to see like where are some, some potential pitfalls? Where does the trail go? Where, you know, you got to know all these things. You can't just be blindly walking. So I recommended trader view. And if you don't want to do trader view, just do a spreadsheet. It's super simple. All right, excerpt number four. I trade futures because the PDT rule doesn't apply. All right, this is a huge problem because if you're making decisions based solely upon the PDT rule, then there could be a problem there as well. You just don't want to be trading too large in a small account. So if you're a brand new trader, there's nothing wrong with only taking two trades a week, you know, that, and that would keep you under the PDT rule. So they typically will give you three trades within a certain number of weekdays. I think it might be five, within five trading days, you can trade three day trades and not be flagged with the PDT rule. So if you in fact could do that, you could just take two to three trades every five to seven days or whatever the, the window is. That would allow you to dip your toe in the water, but not be taking big losses because you're over trading. The PDT rule for this person could actually help them kind of slow them down and make them take very strategic and well-spaced out trades. If the setup isn't perfect, you can't take it because you can't afford to burn one of your trades. So it could possibly help you if you are a newer trader. And excerpt number five, I spend six to 12 hours a day trading and watching educational videos. Okay, so this is great. This is showing dedication. You're putting a lot of time into it, but I don't think you should be trading that long. I don't think you should be in and out of the markets all day long. I think as a new trader, the trader fatigue that can happen can be very real. And if you start to lose, you could then start to revenge trade because you don't know what's happening and because you don't have any structure around you. If your structure or your plan says you can't take more than two trades in a day, 
then you might be done in 30 minutes and not have to sit and trade the entire day. And typically if you do that, which I've experienced in the past, if you trade a lot during the day, the chances are you're probably going to lose money. Most traders that I know that are effective in the markets and profitable, they have strategic trades they take. When they run their course and they're done, they either win or they lose, and then they're done. It's just a few trades a day, one to three, one to four trades, one to five trades. I don't know anyone that trades a lot during the day, and I have to think that that helps protect you against significant losses. Just my opinion and my experience, but just wanted to share that with you. And something else I noticed in the email that I wanted to share with you was, this person seemed to have a strategy and then very quickly dismiss it because of a loss or two and move on to something else. And this is the problem that I had a while back was hopping from strategy to strategy when things weren't working out. And the one thing I wanna share, this is a very important point. If you're trading a setup that comes around infrequently, like let's say your setup comes around once a day or maybe once every two days, when you lose on that setup, it's very frustrating and if you know that you have to wait another day or two before you can take that trade again, that can become very frustrating and cause you to hop from strategy to strategy. But the perfect analogy for this is if you plant a seed in some soil and water it and the next day you get up and you dig the seed up because you want to see what's happening, you're like, I don't understand what's happening, it's not working, and you dig it up, then that plant's never gonna have a chance to grow. You have to sort of trust your process and build and give that seed time to grow. So you might take five losses in a row, and that's okay, it happens to all of us, but you gotta sit tight through it because ultimately you know you have an edge. Ah, and you're saying, Jimmy, you didn't say anything about an edge. Now I'm going to. Edge is what you need. So before you're doing any of this trading, you have to take whatever strategy that you're wanting to trade and the rules you've applied to it, and you have to go back to past data, and you have to back trade this thing 50 to 100 times so that you can effectively calculate what your win rate is to determine your edge. Now, once you have your edge calculated, and if you do have an edge, then you can apply everything that we've just talked about. So you can see where this person went even more wrong. They haven't back tested anything. So everything they're having a problem with shouldn't be a problem right now because they shouldn't be trading at all. They should have a strategy that they've back tested. And when I respond to them and say, hey, what's your back testing win rate? What's your edge? They should be able to provide me with a spreadsheet that shows 50 to 100 trades and a calculation that says X which shows me they have an edge based on their trading plan. If you don't have that, you can't trade at all. You can't even start. The start is the hard work in the beginning. It's back testing. It's figuring out if you do have an edge because if you don't have an edge, you're sort of just rolling the dice and gambling. You're not really cornering a few percentage edge and leveraging that for gains. Imagine if casinos didn't know what their edge was in blackjack. While it's a small edge, it's still an edge, and they know that over a large sample size, they're going to win. If they didn't have that knowledge, nobody would open a casino. You have to know what is the revenue that I could potentially generate because of my edge. Never forget the edge. All right, and as I promise you've stayed this long, I wanna say I'm now gonna play that live video for you. The trade recap from Monday, I want you to see it. It's on AMD, but before I play it, I want you just to jump down there, hit that subscribe button, and if you got some value out of this video, hit that thumbs up because that helps the algorithm, it helps the channel. And if you wanna join our free private Facebook group, there's a link below, we'd love to have you. Here's your trade recap.